All right. As the creepy lady just said, yeah, I know we're recording. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again, and we are going to talk a little bit about this thing called brand archetypes. So um, first up, as I rearrange my screen a little bit here to find all you guys, I don't know why when you share your screen, Zoom like moves all the windows around. Um, so what the heck is a brand archetype? By a show of hands, who has even heard of this phrase? Okay. So about half, a little more than half, maybe. All right. So I've got a definition here for you. An archetype in general is um, a very typical example of a certain person or thing uh, or a perfect example of something. So the little thing that came from Webster's Dictionary was he is the archetype of a successful businessman. It's basically like uh, Arnie Palmer right now in our, I mean, Andy Palmer. What did I just call you? Arnie Palmer. I have no oh. idea. He's an Arnold too. <laughs> anyway, he My plays still has that. So, um, so an archetype is sort of a, a model or a representation, a typical example of something. And the famous psych psychologist Carl Jung talked about these and he sort of broke it down into 12 different personality types. I'm probably I, like, I don't have a real deep understanding of this, but like I, this is a very surface view of this, but I think even still, it's it's been useful to me for the, the stuff that I've learned for some of the work I've been doing lately. So if you break it down into these 12 elements, and these are um, how you create your brand that by by focusing on one of these archetypes or standard personality types, basically, then you you are more likely to A, be consistent and B, to resonate with your audience, your target audience, because these are the 12 things that sort of make up most personalities. So if you're really focusing on one, you're going to then draw in your target audience. So um, there, are, here are the 12 and here are what they mean. This little graphic, I didn't make any of the graphics for this slideshow, but they are everywhere. It's not like I just stole them from one person. Like you can find this graphic uh, if you just search brand archetypes, if you wanted to go back and look at it, so you can see um, how some of them have similarities and some of them don't really overlap at all. They use a little color wheel thing. And then I have a slide for each one of them, each one of the 12. And I thought maybe we could just take a minute or so on each and just sort of review them. And I think if you can do this, um, you can use these things to think about your ideal customer persona. But what I've been doing is trying to determine my business persona. So who am I and how do I want to be perceived by my customer base, my clients? Um, so these are in no particular order, I don't think. So the first one we'll talk about though is the outlaw and they go for, um, it's either revolution or um, rebellion or something like that, where it's like rules are made to be broken they are, as you can see down here, like they're disruptive. Or, can you guys see my mouse? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Disruptive, rebellious, combative. And sort of the message, the general message is you don't have to settle for status quo. First, demand more. Second, go out and get it. This is the tough guy. This is the cowboy of the bunch. We know one of those. <laughs> no, whatever. I'm not the outlaw. No, I... it's somebody else I'm talking about who we know. Oh. Yeah. Can we each oh. be part of one of these? Give me more. Yeah, there's lots of overlap and stuff, but what from what I've been reading, if you can really nail down one to really try to embody, it gives you a lot more clarity in your messaging and things like that. I could never so, do a Myers Briggs test. I know I'm the same way. I'm like, but what if I'm in a different mood that day? I might have a different answer. <laughs> so um, so this is these are some examples of these brands like Virgin. Harley Davidson, you can totally see that being a very sort of rebellious brand. I don't know about diesel. Like, I don't know if they're that hardcore, but she, like the jeans, I don't know. But this is, again, I didn't make this. This is just to, this is just an overview to break this all sort of down. So, so that's the outlaw. Uh, I don't think in our industry, we're running into a ton of this particular archetype because we aren't really trying to rebel. We want to help people and serve people. So. 
Uh, the Magician, which I think has a sort of a weird name, but um, focuses on power. Uh, things are possible. It can happen, right? Mystical, informed, reassuring. And so tomorrow is brighter than today and all your dreams can come true if you believe. If that doesn't sound like Disney World or something, right? So Disney is definitely one of these. Um, Coca-Cola and Dyson. Again, I'm not so sure about Dyson, but they're they're doing, you know, they're making magic happen. So is this something that um that you're trying to do? Are you, I mean, maybe this could be something potentially that you're trying to like make magic happen for your clients and you want to come across with one of these almost uh fantasy kind of personas, right? Like you can wave your magic wand and make make the magic happen. Um next up we've got the hero who goes for mastery. Now you can you can look at the little picture here and this just sort of gives you like they're they're brave and what says honest and candid. These like it's a hero. When you think of a hero, either a superhero or somebody in public service or all of these things, they're going to make the world better. Uh, grit and determination are going to, you know, whatever, these kind of things, sort of a military vibe almost maybe. Um, Nike is a prime example of something like this, right? They're, you just do it. It's, po you know, it's, you can do it. Just do it. It's possible. They're going to take you there. Um, Adidas, another similar sort of thing. I don't know. And then FedEx, I think, is an interesting choice as an example of this because it doesn't seem super gritty, but also like it's not it's like it's amazing what they have accomplished and what their sort of messaging is that like we're going to get it there. We're going to deliver on time and we're going to we're going to get that package there. So um, those are some hero brand examples. Next up, the lover. So this one is where you start to focus on, uh, now all of these are focusing on emotion, but this one is the most emotional feeling really, I think. Intimacy, um, this is where you come into things that are more sensual or sexual or things, but things that you would talk about like chocolate brands would have this kind of a thing and like where it's, a, you know, like the flavors and the tastes and the and romance and stuff like that. Obviously Victoria's Secret is a great one. Alfa Romeo, like talk about like a sexy car and how it would make you feel sensual, empathetic and soothing. Talking about beauty and all of these kind of things. Again, I don't know that this is really a common one in our industry, but you can start to like, when you read this, you can be like, oh yeah, totally. Like I get the people, I mean, sex sells always. So there's plenty of brands that do use this. The jester, one of my faves, um, communicating with humor. These are more light and playful, optimistic, fun-loving. It says here, um, we're here for, we're here for a short time, not for long. I think they mean we're here for a good time, not a long time. I think they screwed up that phrase. It's supposed to be we're here for a good time, not a long time. Um, M and M's. I mean, talk about like a, a goofy sort of which I, I find it a little bit offensive because like the characters that you like, then you're supposed to eat them, which I think is cruel and awful. Uh, it's like why every barbecue place in the US, in the South, like every barbecue place has a cute pig for their mascot, their logo. And I cannot understand why, like it upsets me so much. It's so uh, wrong. I know it's so wrong. Where's Beth? She would back me. Oh, there you are. You, you back me up on that bet. They're all mm. cute pigs. So, um, this one, the other one that um, is really a good example of this is, is. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't understand why the cute pigs are bad. <laughs> like I want, I start to like the pig and then the food oh, they're serving okay. is the pig. I, like, okay. I get it now. I'm sorry. It messes with my understand. emotions. Yeah. So now I just ruined barbecue for you. Sorry. Uh, Restaurant uh, at the end of the universe. You need to watch for that. Just as, a, as an aside. Restaurant at the I'm, end of the universe. Cute pigs eating cute pigs. No, thank you. Just, just watch it. It's good. Okay. Um, but the barbecue Geico, sure it, is good. <laughs> yeah, Geico is a great example of a gesture brand. You know, their commercials are all just very tongue in cheek, very sort of ridiculous. Not just the ones with the lizard, but the, remember they used to have like really crazy ones, uh, like crazy stuff happening. And it's like, but I just saved ten percent of my car insurance. You know those ones. I don't know if you guys have those in the other countries, but. Um, like the dollar one. like even a cave oh yeah 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 the caveman, caveman ones and all yeah. that yeah 
Um, Old Spice does hilarious things. They are they've really changed over the past several years from like being like your dad's aftershave or whatever. And they have kind of goofy, very lighthearted things. So I like the gesture. Um, I think that this is one that we can use. I think tech can be very serious. And so it's not super common, but people respond to this kind of thing. You know, they do. Everybody wants to be entertained. The everyman. This one is somebody that is super relatable. Um, look, honesty and friendliness, humble, authentic. This is the one that has sort of the most ambiguity to it because it could overlap with a lot of the other ones. Um, but some of these brands, when you start to look at the brands that they specify, you can like, oh yeah, totally. Like Ikea, right? Like here's furniture. You can build it. Like we're a part of, like, we're all in this together. You know, like we're, you're, you're just as good as we are. Target is just sort of like accessible everyday clothing and things for the house and all of that. So you can tell totally, I don't know what Lynx is. Does anybody know what Lynx brand is? It's a fun, um, cheap deodorant. Oh, I love a fun deodorant. It's cheap though. It's the only the caregiver, um, not surprisingly, you're going to find this being like um, charities, nonprofits, things like that, that are out there doing good. They are, they believe in service, loving your neighbor, their sort of adjectives, their voices, caring, warm and reassuring. Um, UNICEF, World Wildlife Foundation, uh, those are nonprofit examples. Tom's is a for-profit example, but they are one that also has service really baked in or, or giving baked in because they, since the very beginning, would give away a pair of shoes to someone in need for every pair you buy. So, you know, this doesn't have to be a nonprofit, but you get the idea of like that caregiver and like we're, we're they're doing good. Uh, the ruler is somebody that is in control. This is a power person. Um, when it comes to a movie, I saw this, they used like the Godfather to demonstrate this one in film. Like this is somebody that is in absolute control and like any negative to them would be like looking frail or, you know, being um, humiliated or something like that. These are people that are very strong, very in control. And when you start to look at a brand like Rolex and you can sort of get that like feeling that you get of like that is a superior level product right that's something that is in control and it's not going to be like nobody's making fun of a rolex or uh unless you bought it in times square because then it's not a rolex um you know louis vuitton mercedes benz come on like they're all just like rock solid top of their game and they can command high prices they can they're just in control nobody's telling them what to do so that's the ruler the creator now we're getting somewhere you guys when we get into the creator it's uh not only being creative but like with imagery but also innovation specifically so if it could be imagined it can be created think different anyone anyone like this is this is apple all over um adobe even it I've seen these three brands are the ones that were always sort of mentioned with this archetype of the creator. This is where you can be inspirational, daring, you're, you're cutting edge here. See potential everywhere and uncover originality with liberated imagination. I find that to be a frustrating use of title caps, but like, I'm going to just go with it anyway. Um, so it's, you know, you think of that sentence, like all of a sudden, does that resonate with anybody? Like that starts to be like, okay. I can see how my business could embody something like this potentially, right? We go to our clients who have maybe a boring problem and we turn it into something that is an opportunity. We can innovate because we use technology as well. So that adds to the feeling of innovation and, um, and like uh, that creative element of it. I think, I think we have two more. I can't, I've lost track. Um, in the innocent, this one is where you value safety. You're not going to go out on a limb too much. You're going to be very humble and optimistic. 
um, wholesome, pure. I know you guys are thinking about me as a person right now, and I don't blame you for that because of all of these words, but, um, very but I don't good. know. It's very good. Stephanie. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Um, Dove, you know, Dove could almost be, they do the, those campaigns for like, love your body, whatever size and shape it is. So that could almost be some of those other like caring ones, uh, or the charity ones. But, uh, this one, you know, like their ingredients are pure their um product is pure their branding is all light colors and you know like avino is like very neutrals and naturals dove is white you know you can sort of see these patterns in even the visual elements of these brands that are going for this wholesome unadulterated pure thing and then um the sage uh this is your yoda character basically this is the the one that um has all the wisdom so this is another one that we could we could potentially um channel in our businesses particularly if you were going to go into some sort of like a coaching angle or you know instructional things if you're doing courses you want to maintain an, an element of being very knowledgeable um assured so you want to have that confidence so people you're, you're not saying like and then this is true, you know, like you're confident, you're assured, you are the guide here, you're guiding people. Um, for those of us who follow Donald Miller, if we want to present ourselves as the guide, this could potentially be, which is what he sort of is his proponent for us. Uh, this could be something that would be a good fit for us to take on. Um, Google, uh, these, these brand choices were interesting to me too. Um, University of Oxford super old institution known for not for education very much knowledge assured like that's not toppling anytime soon right like that's so on solid ground um and based on sharing truth and knowledge uh the bbc i don't really watch it so i don't know and then google i thought was interesting because if you think about it it's not um like google only really gives us information when we seek it out from them but I thought that's an interesting take on a say on a sage, right? Or a guide that we go to them, you know, you got to climb the mountain to see the whatever. I don't know. What I, there's a analogy there, but I don't have it. Um, Muhammad. so anyway, that's, that's another one. What, what Bring Andrew? Muhammad to the mountain or, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's yeah. just, what, whatever, whatever. No, still can't do it. <clears throat> okay. This is the last one. I was completely wrong. It feels like there's more than 12. Did that not feel like a lot? The Explorer, which um, just right out of the gate, you can you can look at those brands. Jeep, right? I mean, come on. Uh, probably like a Land Rover thing too, where they have to park the trucks like on an angle on the parking lot on like a big rock, you know, uh, those kind of things. These are um, don't fence me in. We're going to be daring and exciting and fearless. Uh, get out there and do take action, do things. Um, North Face, Patagonia. These are, you know, I mean, a lot of bros, a lot of like stock market bros, like a Patagonia vest. I don't know if you guys watched Succession. There was like a funny thing about that in there. But anyway, uh, that also is a brand that is really outdoorsy and, you know, adventure and things like that. Not, like things that would be anti-explorer would be like basic fear <laughs> or cowardice or things like that you wouldn't want to represent any of those kind of elements so um i'm going to jump back now to the um the picture of these just to keep this on the screen for a little bit and now that i've did, said all of these words which has been a lot of them basically reading the screen to you guys you're welcome um i thought maybe we could just sort of kick around some ideas if anybody's open to it, which does anyone have one? Did something really jump out at anybody when you were reviewing, when we went through these, that any of them really hit you like, Hey, yeah, that's bingo. That's it. That's me. Jester. <laughs> Jester. Oh, nice. I love that about you, Abby. That's why we get along. Yeah. I like so, creator. Creator. <laughs> creator is a really solid one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so Abby, how would you, like, do you feel like that's something you've already been using in your business to market it? Like, is that already sort of baked into your brand voice a bit? 
Yeah, because my brand is Swink Studio and it's an archaic word. So I, I kind of have like 50s and 60s style a little bit. I'm going to push oh, yeah, that more. Right. But and then the the voice is a little bit kind of like silly and light retro sort of. Nice. I love that. So then if you go back and check out some of those other Jester brands, you can then see how you can take that because a lot of whenever our whatever archetype our business is for for most of us here it's gonna have a lot to do with what our personality is just because the, these are our our babies right this is created we're solopreneurs a lot of us and all this right so it's gonna have a lot to do with us but at some point there has to be what well, there is a separation and so sometimes it can be difficult to say like would my brand persona say it this way or would it say it that way and maybe you hit a mood <laughs> or a down turn or you're in a struggling place or you're not you know or you're going through a rough patch or whatever you're distracted in some way it your your brand voice even though your personal voice changes your brand voice really shouldn't as much as possible right you want to stay consistent as you're in your messaging so to use some of these things to reference other brands that are using these efficiently could potentially be helpful so hey, Stephanie, um, quick question yeah. You know, if, if they section these off into quarters, like the three that are associated here, for instance, creator, ruler, and caregiver provide structure. And I mean, because I'm kind of feeling myself in the service area too. Is that, is there a reason that they did that? Uh, I, I don't fully know. I, like I said, this isn't my graphic. This is just one that I was seeing everywhere. I think that these three, this is just uh, at the core of what they do. So they're providing structure for people. So even if you're innovating, like in our industry, like you could provide structure as if you're innovating to like find solutions for people's problems and things like that. If you're ruling them, you know, if you're one of those boss brands, you're giving them a structure because you don't budge. That's a structure that you have set in place because you're the boss. And then if you're a caregiver, you're also somebody that maybe is lost at sea. You're sort of giving them comfort and strength and structure along with it. That would be my sort of assumption to how they're breaking this down. Um, as far as the research I've done. Objectives, like what drives them? So uh, a lot of times leave a legacy. So what gets uh -huh. you out of bed as a hero and outlaw? is that you want to try to leave a legacy. And I think like a ruler, care, a caregiver and a creator, they, in the end, ultimately what they want is that when they look back, that their structure, um, and because otherwise they didn't create something, they didn't do their best as a ruler, they didn't control anything. So, and yeah, lover, jester, and everyone, I think in the end, what drives them is that they want to pursue connection. It's all about that part. So I think it's like their ultimate like driver is what I think. Yeah, I think so too. So Scott, how could you then take just, um, you know, off the top of your head, do you feel like you've been well, implementing I, that creator? Yeah, I say that because or... I, I look at the, the only other one that I really feel that I is part of my brand is because I come from such a long history of hospitality that I'm really mm -hmm. service oriented. Um, and I'm kind of calling my whole new thing. Like I'm like the Nordstrom's of, of what presenters where I'm not Gucci, but I'm not Payless. Yeah. And I provide yeah. a level of service when people ask why you're this, that, that many and most don't. I'm like really, really, I return phone calls. I, I, I do things that Good, I like a that. lot of other agencies don't. I probably do too much, but I'm all about that service element. So it kind of made sense. Right. So this one is easy for us to identify with because we like technology and we like, in, if you're in technology, you innovate because it does not stay the same, right? This is different than like Oxford University where the same books are so, you know, like we've got history, if you're teaching history, like it doesn't change very often, right? So, uh, but if you're building websites, it changes constantly. So innovation is always necessary. So I think that's where this can really resonate with a lot of us. Um, and then when you Definitely. look at like the brands that they reference, yeah. My so I think that's one. Um, and then let's see, Jen said hero. I wish I had these labeled better in here because I don't one know. One of my that. URLs is somebody'shero.co.uk. It is, somebody's. Somebody's. Probably, yeah. Everybody. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, everybody's here. No, that's a different domain. You should see if that's available. Mm -hmm. Everybody's here. Okay. So here you go, Jen. Let's talk a little bit about how you're going to, I know you said your word for the year. Oh, Jen, are you still there? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's talk about um, how are you going to incorporate this or how have you been incorporating this sort of hero vibe into your business? Well, I mean, my, my tagline is basically I fix messes. So mm -hmm. bring me your problems. I will solve them. Great. That could go caregiver or hero though, right? Like yeah, you could fix problems for people, but I'm just saying like, no, no, no. I know. Yeah. You're a, yeah. Well, you're more like going to light things on fire than put the fires out, but you know, that's. I will do another. both. Flambe. <laughs> it's a thing. So, um, Blow let's see. So can be the answer. So what else are, um, so when it comes to not just a tagline, but the way you communicate with your clients or your customers, so does this come it's into play? Definitely very candid. Like mm -hmm. I would I say that is them, you all this over. Is a yeah. Bad idea. I'm not doing it. And you do uh, come across as very honest as well. Mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I mean, honestly, what some are your, of the customers yeah. who love me the most, are the ones who I start out by saying no. Mm -hmm. and they're like, but everyone else said yes. I just talked mm -hmm. to three different people. They all said yes. And I say, well, you can go to them. I'm telling you, no, that plan's bad. Here's a different plan. And you know, I I actually, I, yeah, I really like this for you. The more, you're, the more we're talking about it, because I can see this about you. Like you do have this sort of grit, this toughness about you, but like, we can make the world better. Like how it mm -hmm. says in the slide here, like you really do care about people and oh, you yeah, do your do. little meetup groups that you volunteer for and all that stuff. So I think that's really, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Did anybody else have one that they sort of resonated with? I, I think I'm a hero too. Yeah. You're my, I know you're my hero, Christian. <laughs> Christian is more of the soft hero. He's, a, he's, a, he's like the wonderful hero that super friendly and nice and I'm more of the little well, bit terrifying hero, but well, mine is not think is sloth. Mm -hmm. soft Christian. I think in my case, I generally like uh, I have a need, and it was I was looking at another site that explained like the the desired uh, fears and the strategy behind it as well, um, mm -hmm. which is in the link. And there it says as well that you like try to prove wrong. So if someone else accuses you, for me, it's really fast that I try to explain why um, in that as well. And I always like say, if, if a client says something that I think is not like a good idea, I just tell them that <laughs> in that way. Yeah. So which, where were you on here? Did you just scroll down yeah. to some of them? Yeah. So to this is here, the link you sent. Yeah, yeah so okay, a little bit down, 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 down. There it is. Yeah, there you go. I think a little bit more down still. Because there's quite a lot on the page, and uh, on the page. movie that they relate to it, I think is one of my it's my favorite movie too. So really, so here they here they go. So if the outlaw and done, they have like the descriptions for it. There. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good link, everybody. Click on that then. Yeah. And as well, they even give you a color palette. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't go down to uh, hero, I think two down, addition and then hero. Aha, found it. Okay, so this is what we've already seen. And then now we go down a little bit more. So your fears are incompetence. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so for example, I if I am not able to fix something, I just get that away. Makes you loot, that makes you go crazy. Yeah. yeah, so that's why I like problems because I like to solve them and to show huh? that I can. In a way, I like to be on, my, on top of my game and everything. So mastery uh, and growth in that part. I love well. that. Yeah, this is totally you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Gladiator is my favorite movie. Gladiator. I, even, nice. even, even the soundtrack, the main one of the main songs was my wedding music when it was coming in. Really? <laughs> you entered your marriage under the yeah. Gladiator thing. All right. Did anyone give you the thumbs down? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily not. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's see if we can find on this page. Um, what was the other one? Let's find the gesture for, for 
Abby. Let's see here. A little bit down. It's in the same order. So I know, yeah. but <clears throat> I'm just gonna search. Is this where it has it? Oh. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. That was easy. Uh okay, Abby. So fun, happiness, laughter, togetherness, positivity. You do not like to be bored, correct? Nope. nope. Yeah. No, no, no gloomy, sad, no uh negative Nancy. No, no offense, Nance. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you promote good times and make them laugh. Jim Carrey. That's your yep. That's your movie guy. You've got a color palette. The color palette is the weirdest of all of this for me. Like, uh, interesting. Yeah, Dollar Shave Club is really um, okay. So, like magicians, jesters are rarely a buyer persona, but can be a perfect archetype for brands in the business of entertaining or wanting to associate themselves with good times. So, you don't normally see think of this as a like you're a service provider, obviously, right? So. Um, but you can highlight the lighthearted and positive side of life. I think this is absolutely a, a great angle that could set you apart from other folks because how do most people we meet feel about tech? They are terrified and they hate it and it makes them in a bad mood. So if you can come yeah. in and make tech fun and easier and not awful, like you really would have an advantage over some, some com competition. So I think that's cool um what was the other yeah and, and one of my things i say don't flip your wig about it i'll take care of it for you <laughs> don't flip your wig man oh wait i found it yeah good i like it hero brand here we go here you go jen so we read we read that one already uh mastery courageousness growth development defense defense interesting um Oh, we already looked at this. This is the one we looked at with. Yeah, but defense is a I'm weird crazy. one, isn't it? It is a weird one. Hmm. Uh, Maybe well, like your What am I forgetting? I mean, oh, we we, we, we did the heroes. We we defend and protect. Right. Exactly. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. I thought like being I, I defensive. Think, yeah, like general Maybe dynamics. Wrong or word. North uh, Grumman. Yeah. You know. Okay, so creator um, personality. Here we go, Scott. Um, you are afraid of stagnation. That's mm -hmm. deep. And duplication. How about that? You want to be unique. Familiarity, disillusion, those things you don't like. So uh, you encourage the pursuit of originality. You are like Emmett you Brown. <laughs> Doc. Hey, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Your doc, but with less hair. <laughs> yeah, think different. Branding strategy to appeal to create. Oh, this is this is to sell to these people. This is if it's your mm -hmm. um, customer persona. Um, Lego. That's a that's a great example of a of a creator brand that they are literally encouraging people to create and providing the literally the building blocks for creativity <laughs> um okay does anybody else have one that they might want to no just as talk a about? Side, that lego have a certified coaching program using lego you can become a certified coach management consultant coach hmm. using lego <laughs> their brand how you fun do that you should do that andrew for your next career oh wait there was some in the chat Who's on char in charge of chat today? Nobody's telling me these things. Okay, hold on. Vicky Jeff Baptiste has one. Has one. Oh, Je Jeff had one first. We'll go to his. Okay. And we'll come to Vicky's. Uh, creator and adventurer. Okay, so Jeff says my agency's tagline is adventurous excellence. That's pretty good. So uh, let's look up the adventurer for him. I think it was actually what was the name? I think I used the wrong name. It's not adventurer. Explorer. Explorer. That's it. Okay, good. The search worked anyway. Okay. So Explorer is again, these are your, your Jeep Patagonia kind of people. You're fearless. You, these are the people scale, like climbing mountains and stuff. That is not for me, but I'm thrilled that's for you. Uh, okay. So yes. you're driven by adventure exploration. You like the unknown. I think a lot of us that's sort of similar to innovation, right? If you like the unknown a little bit, Self-discovery is an interesting aspect of that. 
And uh, you do not like to be confined, immobile, incarcerated, entrapped. Wow, is there a bit of a pattern with those fears? Uh, are you claustrophobic, Jeff, by any chance? Because Maybe a little. No. <laughs> It, it seems like, like they just went to Webster's and picked out all the uh, synonyms. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to be, you don't want to be stuck, really. Right. Um, are you a celebrate the journey kind of guy? I am fairly, yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'm a good mix between creator and um, the explorer. Oh, how, how so? Well, like in my agency, I, I like to... I like to really try new things, um, things that maybe are untested. For example, we're doing a website in a day program and we're loving it. Um, it's something that's kind of scary, but yeah, with no. a small agency, I think we can tackle it. And we like, yeah, just trying new things. I love it. Um, so Indiana Jones. Yeah. Indy. That's. No, or you're like, eh. What yeah, I don't know. I, I would say so. Who was the one on the creator? Who was like the movie character? Anybody remember? Oh, it was. It the, was uh, Doc. Back, back to the Future. Yeah. That was on create. I feel like that's wrong. I don't. I'm not buying that. But anyway, okay. I guess I have to make my own charts if I want to. He jumps <laughs> at first as well when there's a situation. He just jumps. He just goes without knowing what's coming so i think that might fit is it, you're an in, are you an inconsequential thinker i just learned that phrase with jill when i was visiting her because i you would never expect it but she is an inconsequential thinker she she like something pops in her head and she does it and then thinks about the consequences that was in porto wasn't it she made that conversation at, at the uh -huh. time it was a brilliant yeah. phrase yeah. It, it is yeah and then um remember that people I, it really blew my head off when she I said that i saw it in action too and she like she is hilarious like you wouldn't she doesn't have to be like out front about it it just you can just watch her like i would just be dying laughing just watching her go through her life it was really funny so one of the okay. reasons why i picked that that branding is because most of my competition is established agencies and my target market is um millennials uh, millennial entrepreneurs so i'm mm -hmm. i'm a little bit cheaper than my competition and i really drive this adventurous type type um market because like they're not going to the established agencies charging ten thousand dollars plus that's who my main client base is i think that's super cool um Okay, so I'm scared. I'm scrolling the chat again. So we've got two more. Nancy says she's sage and with a little kicker of creative. I think if any of us don't just identify with creative, we're going to have a kicker of creative, right? Because that's like the innovation one. Like that's just by nature what we do. Um, so I think it's cool to see all these other sides coming out. So sage and then Vicky is... Um, caregivers so let's just look at those really quickly i know we're at the top of the hour so i won't we won't take too too much more time uh especially on this recorded part um and if you are watching the replay of this you miss out on all the before and after stuff so you should come hang out on a thursday night slash friday morning okay so um it's i mean what could be more fun than watching me surf the internet for you <laughs> and read and read the pages <laughs> it's perfect it will be a podcast. Uh, okay. I know. Where did I go here? Okay. Sage. Okay, here we go. Got it. All right. So this is you, Nance. Yeah. You're the Yoda. You're mm -hmm. the Yoda group. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think this really could work for a lot of us as well because we do have knowledge that our especially our especially when you get really those clients out. that have tried to build their website. Yeah, and they're, sure. they've got that that look of fear in their eyes <laughs> yeah i mean this is like you, if you're like a clothing store like there's no sage you know it's not like yeah. you're not you, you know you're not educating people so it's not just like anybody who's buying anything is really needs that kind of guidance um so i think that's that's interesting and to be able to take that knowledge and not 
be a jerk about it and to be able to share it in a way that empowers people, I think is super cool. Let's see the personality traits. <clears throat> Wisdom, intelligence, expertise, information, and influence. And then things like insanity are your fear. So that's that's a thing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You're afraid of insanity. Oh, yes. You don't like to be powerless. Mm -mm. You don't like things that are inaccurate. Mm -hmm. You're afraid of being ignorant. Mm -hmm. All right. I can see that. Oh, look, that was Yoda in there. Mm -hmm. Brand slogan, don't be evil, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but are they? Or too so, late, too late. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so that's interesting. And then what was the last one? Caregiver. Okay, this is you, Vixter. So, you know, the interesting thing when you said like about the, the colors, right? I just rebranded and those first two colors in the color palette were my colors <laughs> that I rebranded no re from. Yeah, really. Oh, so what did you go with now? Um, well, one of the colors is still like the first one is still kind of there, but like I've got more, um, I can't even remember. Like it's all so new, but um, I've got purple in there now, like a muted purple. Mm, cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about these the qualities again. Purple. These are sort of your your charities, your nonprofits. Well, that your... kind of purple. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like this. Yeah. Well, you are right on brand. Yeah. For all of this, Ken. None of that now. It's it's too soon for the yawning, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Because then it just spreads like wildfire through the whole Zoom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's rude. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, no. Come back. Come back. <laughs> um, okay. So your drive is to support, a help, serve. You're driven by gratitude and recognition. What a lovely. My, my 48 hours on the help desk on the weekend. That's, that's, yeah. That's you, you were driven to support. Um, you are afraid of neglect blame anguish and helplessness that's uh it feels almost a little fragile but very it's good. You put others before yourself patch adams they went into the archives for this one have we not yeah. had a movie made with a caregiver in the past like 25 years <laughs> um so how do you how do you implement this in your brand then um, in my branding, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously we all, um, well, many of us have like care packages, right? Care, um, like maintenance packages, whatever. So that's my branding is like, I don't have a maintenance plan. I have a care plan. So there's that. Um, yeah. And I just like, I feel like I, I, I described myself the other day as a mattress, which is really bad, but it's like all my clients were like having these crises and like they came to me and it's like, I was like this therapist where after they'd finished talking to me and I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. Like we'll sort this out. And it was Aww. like a therapy session where they felt fine after talking to me that all their problems were all sorted out and everything was fine because Vicky's going to take care of it. And Aww. that's just, you know, we like, really do. I was that, able to, yeah, smooth over the, all the waters and everything was fine. And then that's when I go to like Jen and Christian and go, help, because this isn't working. And then they fix my stuff and everything's fine. <laughs> um, I think uh, he's not afraid of insanity. No one's <laughs> monitoring the chat, but I want to. I, I know. Bring, I want to call Vicky out for, for a word. With, I want to read what Vicky wrote. I don't know whether anybody... Vicky, Not but, in a bad way. No, no, no. Call, in, in a good way. Always call out people in a good way. So it's... Um, her, she's got a $5 word in there. It wasn't the cat suit, was it? <laughs> Multi-potentialite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Sage is my second sector too. I work in knowledge management and as a multi-potentialite, I uh -huh. make my business to know everything about everything. Yeah. That's hard. That's now got me thinking. I'm copying and pasting this and having it. Okay, Leah, look at multi-potentialite. No, I just, I kind of understand. I think I understand. It's like that. a jack of all trades, master of none. So you got to go like. Yeah, I mean, that phrase, that phrase. A person who has many different interests and creative pursuits in life. 
Yeah, but that phrase is also, um, that's not the full phrase. So we need to look up what the full phrase is. Uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. No. But it goes on, there's a thing, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's a little more positive, I think. It's much yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, which one are you? Are you like uh, sage? All, you're sage. All the above. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're rebelling against the choosing of one. I see. That's it's so hard because there are so many all factors is. that we can all and, relate to. And, yeah. and you don't turn off the other things either, guys. This is like this is like when you when you focus down on your ideal customer personas and whatever. It's not that you would never work with somebody in a who looked different or did something different or worked in a different industry. It's just that's who you're focusing on. And so if you can have one of these that is your underlying persona, then if this is what resonates with you and how, what you want your business to be represented by, then you're going to draw those people that are best suited to work with you. And also it gives you a framework for some consistency and all of that kind of stuff. Just like we sort of talked about at the front. I mean, none of us are single dimensional, of course. So, um, I think anyway, yeah. I think outlaw fits outlaw. you here. Yes. He's the rebel. <clears throat> doesn't play you by know, the rules yeah but i'm a lover too so come on oh for sure but, yeah. but, but it doesn't mean that you're only one uh and these are just like parts of you and that you probably most convey with but you everyone always has a few things of some um uh in that way so, so i think for example if you look at strategy for example like um uh, now, if you go a little bit up to the the full picture, I think that's better for for that. Uh, but <clears throat> a little bit above that one, and I think you you can see that. Like for example, the first thing that Michael says about Google is don't trust them. It's always like <laughs> I know <don't. laughs> trust what they say. But they lied, so why why trust them? Conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Um, have you, where have you been? <laughs> Ken, I want to hear what you have to say, but I got to ask Michael one more thing first. Uh -oh. I keep your hand up. What? So tell me, like, do you think this is all nonsense? At a certain level. Yeah. yeah. Do you do personality tests? I can't do Myers Briggs, like I mentioned. I could 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 ne never take that test. Never. I hate those things. Yeah, no. fear They're stressful. Acceptance. <laughs> Depends Fear of on conformity. <laughs> Christian has you pegged, I think. Oh no, now he's going to be like. Is that the one where you score yourself <laughs> on a number? It's a great check, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's a few I, different ones. I used well, to think everybody I, just, I dated take the Myers Briggs test. Oh my God. Actually, the condensed so version. Hilarious. The, the many, condensed version people, in that book, please understand. How many people you're dating at the moment, Beth? <laughs> Yeah, it's, how's that working for me? I know, yeah, I know. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask Steph, could I use this chart like for my Hallmark movie man? Like, could I pick one? For sure. Yeah. I, this isn't I my chart. So go for it. I, I, good I luck. Good that. luck with the good luck with the uh, Netflix algorithms. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So we're done. <laughs> We are done. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I'm just going to stop sharing. Don't go to that link, anybody. How do I stop sharing? There it is. Okay. Um, so uh, I think I don't Beth's know. choking. <laughs> this isn't the end all be all of, of everything, but I, th I find it interesting. And I just wanted to, I found it interesting as I was doing a bunch of research this past couple of days. And I thought I would share it with you guys. So I hope you got, it at least gave you something to think about. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. To, I think it's important then, to remember, Stephanie, that uh, none of this is about pigeonholing people into one thing, and neither is the Myers exactly. Briggs. It's about preferences, and then and then having a level of understanding about those other people. When I when I sure. studied the Myers Briggs and learned that there are people in this world who are P's who are always going to be late for everything, and that's just the way they are. Um, uh, well, I've turned into a P. I used to be a J. I was always on time and thought anybody that was late all the time, there was something wrong with them. No, it's not. It's a, just a difference, right? And that, that's what that's all about, in my opinion. I think you're right. And I think, um, I just think it gives you something to think about, not to be like locked into or any of that kind of stuff. So uh, if you are watching this on the replay and you want to chime in, 
uh, leave in the comments wherever you're watching it what you think your archetype is and maybe we'll um, re uh, resurrect this conversation and we can talk about it a little bit more all right bye bye guys see you next week